point. This is the back of the bow that's going to be facing away from you when you're shooting. You can actually flex the tips a little forward if you want, just slightly. You know, that's about as far as you'd want to go, just a little off from center. And this is just going to help the bow, you know, retain a little more power. So you just want to keep this all together. And you want to make sure that your tips will line up with the rest of your bow. And there, now that it's cool, that's your tip. And so, now what you can do is you can either wrap it with electrical tape or some other tape. I like using electrical tape to bind it first and then afterwards when we're decorating the bow, I'll usually wrap it with jute or artificial sinew or something to give it a better look. But for right now, you just want to secure these together. And the strain of the string on this will actually hold it together when the bow is drawn, so it's not a really big deal. You're just kind of helping it out. So what you can do is you can take your shrink tubing and take it, and you want to force it down as much as you can. So for this, you want to go maybe two or three inches from this largest section right here. And then what you want to do is you turn on your heat gun. And then you gently heat up the tubing. And I'll give it a shrink. There you go. So once that cools, it'll hold this whole thing, it'll hold this tip together very nicely. And what's nice is that you can paint over it, you know, and it's not going to really stick out. And it, it has a nice look to it. So you want to do this on the other side, and then we'll go on to the next step. All right, so now we're going to shape the handle. Now if you notice, right at the edges of the handle where your jig was, you've got these harsh bends. And what this is going to do is that if you just kept the bow like this, over time it's going to start creasing deeper and deeper and it's going to break here because there's a weak spot. So what we're going to do is we're going to heat up this whole section right in here and then we're actually going to squish this handle inwards a little bit so it becomes a more comfortable grip and it becomes easier for arrows to pass over so it'll shoot a little better okay so we're going to turn on the heat gun and you just want to gently heat up this area okay so now you can see that the harsh bends are actually gone so and as you can see the handle is now plenty soft so what you want to do is you want to take your heat resistant whatever pad and turn off the heat gun and put that aside and you want to flatten it out so what you're trying to do is you're trying to make the handle comfortable to grip so you kind of want this flat and cross section that I'm trying to get here. And this can extend over into the limbs a little bit too. So. And you want to do this quickly as the bow is cooling down. And another thing you can do here is, this is the back side of my bow, you can actually flex the handle forward a little bit so that you get a little more, it's called a reflex right here in the handle and that'll give this flat bow a little more speed. So I'm gonna make sure it's lined up and then you wanna go 
make sure we take the bow and make sure that the tips line up so just want to adjust it that way and another thing you can do now is just go ahead and take your hand and put it right under here and see how that would be as a bow and if you're right handed you want the bow to flex a little more to the right and if you're left handed I mean to the left and if you're left handed you want it to flex a little more to the right and what that will do is that will allow the string to trap more on the side your arrow is going and that's assuming you're shooting you know standard Mediterranean that way you have less uh, deviation in the shot less of the uh, archer's paradox and so your uh, arrow should fly a little truer Okay, so now that it's all set up, this is what your handle looks like now. Now that it's cooled enough where I can grab it, this is how it would look in the hand. So now we're going to do the string knocks. Alright, so for your string knocks, what you want to do is you want to measure in an inch from the end on the sides. You want to do that on both sides. And then what you want to do is with your saw or your file, you want to actually cut 45 degree notches going back. Those want to come around a little bit for the string to track on the back. And then when it comes around to the front, you want it to actually sort of create, you can see there's an indentation here and it wraps around. Now, what's important is you want to make sure that you can actually see when I pull these tips apart, there's some thickness of material there. You don't want to go through that or this is just going to pop right off. And, you know, this is a nice knock for this type of bow. You could just do a pin knock, but because of this cut, it'll weaken it quite a bit. So, this is the best type of knock for this style of tip. So, now that we've got our string knocks, let's uh, string this bow up and check it out. Alright, now that your knocks are finished, this bow is ready to be uh, strung and it's ready to shoot right now if you wanted to. So, if you can see, you know, it's got a nice taper along the limbs, it's got a good profile. Now, if you're wondering why I lost a little bit of the reflex, it's because I've already strung this off. You know, check the brace. I just wanted to make sure that it was okay. You know, if I had to do any finishing touches, um, I didn't have to on this bow, fortunately. But sometimes what will happen is you'll have places where the bow is unusually strong or unusually weak and it won't flex right. And then you need to go back in and fix it. So to kind of illustrate that, I'm going to string this up for you. So the way you do that, the best way for a long bow like this as you can't see my bottom foot, what you're going to do is, let's imagine this is the uh, arch of your foot. You want to actually take the tip, the bottom limb, and actually anchor it right in your, the arch of your foot. So, anchor that in the arch of my foot, and I'm going to take the handle, and I'm going to pull that back. Now I'm going to take my hand on the string loop here, I'm going to push it up, and push it into the knot. There we go. The bow is braced. So I've got it a little over six and a half inches, which is okay. The bigger the distance, the more accuracy you tend to get. Also puts more strain on the bow, and it's going to be a little louder. So I usually go over six and a half for target bows, just because you know I want to maximize whatever accuracy I've got on this. So what you're going to notice right off the bat is this limb is a lot weaker than this limb. Now this is the top limb, and this is what it should look like. This is how your bow should look like. If your bow does not look like this, if the bottom limb is the one that's weaker, then what you need to do is you need to go back and unstring it, and you need to go and gently heat up the flatter spots. You'll notice that this side and this side are fairly even thickness. And so what that's going to do is, you know, you need to take a look at your bow and see, okay, is there a weak spot here? If you find a weak spot, 
you want to heat that spot up gently and what will happen is the pipe will attempt to return back to its normal shape. When it does that, it'll puff out a little bit and you can cool it down in that slightly puffed up shape and make sure it's even with the rest of the bow. And conversely, if you want to weaken that limb, you heat it up and you flatten it a little more. And it's kind of like scraping a bow when you, if you were tillering a wooden bow. The benefit to the PVC is that you can more or less add material back instead of just take it away. So I could adjust this and you could actually change the draw weight of a bow like this by increasing the thickness. Though if you increase the thickness too much you're going to start losing the whole point of a flattened wing bow and it's going to start acting like a straight stick. So right here if you look it looks like it's uneven. If I hold it completely square to the string here this looks like it flexes a lot more. Well, the reason why is we have an extra two inches, if you, need, if you can imagine, two extra inches of limb here. So if we tilt the bow, so here's extra two inches, line that up here with an imaginary line. Now you see that the bow is actually, it's got a nice even curve throughout that distance. The reason why we have this extra two inches here is because this limb, when drawn, is under a lot of pressure. And over time, shooting this repeatedly, this would normally weaken and collapse on the bottom limb. Also, the bottom limb on these bows usually get more abuse because people tend to stand it up on the bottom limb and, you know, it's kind of unavoidable. So, this way, you know, you've evened it out and it's not as big as a problem. What's going to happen is that when you grip the bow and you prepare to shoot, what you're going to notice is that the bottom part of the handle is going to come up into your palm. It's going to force your wrist forward a little bit. And I'll find that rather than detract from my accuracy, it actually makes the bow more comfortable to shoot. You know, this, this bow is going to be very low hand shot. And with that, it just really makes it a smooth drawing, smooth shooting bow. It's a good target bow, and this bow is really lightweight. I would have to uh, guess it's probably about 30 to 35 pounds. And uh, in video two, I'm going to show you how to finish up, make this bow look really nice. You know, it's mainly going to be cosmetic. I'm going to show you how to finish up the limbs, how to protect the back from UV damage. I'm going to finish up the knocks. I'm going to show you how to hide this ugly stuff, and uh, I'm going to show you how to make a arrow rest. A nice, removable, simple arrow rest if you don't want to shoot off the hand. And another thing we're going to cover in the next video is we're going to, I'm going to show you how to weigh the bow. So when you finish it, you can weigh it and you know how much poundage it is. So. That's the bow so far, so you can take this right now and go outside and just hang on for part two. I should have that up pretty soon, so just uh, bear with me and until next time, thanks for watching my video. Thank you very much. Uh, actually, before we go, I wanted to show you another bow. This is one of my personal favorites. This, this has become my hunting bow uh, for PVC. It's a 55 pounds, you know, it's a little bit shorter than this other bow. So if you can see just how much weight gain you get by recurving the tip slightly and by uh, cutting down on some of the weight, or some of the length. Now this bow is a good example. If you wanted to get a little more speed out of your bow, you can recurve the tips a little bit. Now it's important that your string does not wrap over the tips because with the split limb design like this what will happen is the side to side motion will cause distortion and it could cause the bow to collapse. So you want to keep it really light. In future videos I'll show you how to reinforce this so you can make bows like the uh, old Asiatic recurves where they've got that harsh bend and a lot of the string is wrapped over the tip.
But, um, you know, this is just my bow, you can see. It's got a nice even draw, 55 pounds. So. And uh, it's got the removable arrows I was talking about. But overall, yeah, this is a good bow. And, uh, I'll show you how to make ones like this and many more. So just keep posted on my channel. I know I haven't had much activity recently because I've been really busy with moving and everything. But now that things are settled, expect to see more from me. And uh, thanks to all my supporters. And uh, thanks for watching my video.